I never loved the purple. I never loved the yellow. <laughs> <laughs> this guy was, is really honest. I never loved the purple. I never. I, I, it was a it, okay. This was. It was a financial situation that made it sweeten. So the Gripe Nation had some of that, right? Yeah, we, they, yeah, we, yes, we ain't gonna yes, tell the price. Yeah, yes. But yes. the Gripe, Gripe Nation it was a nice. Em, it was a nice envelope. A little, little incentive. A, absolutely, but it had to be. I hear you. I hear it you. had to be. I mean, really, no, no disrespect. I mean, this is me. No, no, no. Because I'm like, but we wanted to go to Ocean State and fight them. Okay, so that was your motivation too. I was like, oh, we gonna go to Ocean. We gonna go in the home and the belly of the beast, and we gonna make a statement right now. And and we did that. Yeah, yeah. And and, and, and we did that, and, and that was. Uh, how many guys? How many guys would do that? How many guys would walk away? I didn't walk away like, yo, I'm going to be on another team. I walked away because of principle. I, I base my life on principle. Whether I'm always right or whether I'm always wrong, right. it's never just because, well, whatever. I just decided to do it. It was a principle. You're not going to talk to me any kind of way like I'm a kid when I held your team down. When I know it's quietly as kept, I'm the silent captain. You want to say that? I'm talking to the guys. I'm I'm getting on guys about training. I'm yelling. I'm screaming. I'm making sure these guys are up. Since me and Reg, I was on this dude. Let's do this. Make sure we do. We in a huddle. I'm talking to strategy. I'm watching teams. And then when I spoke to you, tell me. So, you know, it's just kind of a thing. This, this. I just want to prove the point that I don't need this. This don't make me great. This 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 uniform that I wear. And now uh, we went down there, and uh, we went to fight them at team fights. We won that team fight, and he was rewarded very well for it. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping in to fast forward a little bit, I'm going to come to the All-Stars. I got some questions there. But the only thing I've ever heard about, I know what I know about Jody, and as an interviewer, I got to act like I don't know stuff, so the public gets to know a little bit more about this man. I know in the beginning, when I first met Jody back in 94 or 5 at the Diamonds, he had great kicks. He was an awesome kicker. And you sort of changed the game up a little bit. I should, I should say add it to your repertoire. Because you, you can still kick. Like, like I can. So you can still kick. kick. I know you can still kick. And you add it to your repertoire, you start to bring in the reverse punch, the movement, a lot more broken rhythm than most New York fighters in the past. Not a California swag, but there was there was yeah, yeah, a little, yeah, little yeah, bit of absolutely, California absolutely, absolutely, movement absolutely, and bouncing. Absolutely. You know, because the New York, we try to kick like New Yorkers, yeah, yeah, and sometimes yeah. the East Coast guys try to punch like us. And when you put yeah, it together, it's like you put your peanut butter in my chocolate, yeah, 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 and yeah. you got a Reese cup. Yes, sir. What, what sort of inspired you to add on to your repertoire? Because now what's funny is he's actually known as the master of the reverse punch as far as distance, timing, setting it up, breaking the person's rhythm the whole nine yards, to where this actually was the guy that was known as a ridiculous kicker in the 90s, one of the best kickers. What, what made you change the game up or add that to your repertoire? And when did you do that? Okay, uh, a couple of things that, going in 1997, training with Anthony Price, Richard Crowder, the, the mindset of high percentage and low percentage. Uh, you know, when you start kicking, it's an attribute-based game. Okay. Not to say that you can't kick, but it's based on attributes. And as you get older, that's why if you notice, all the better fighters, when they get older in their 30s, the punching game gives you longevity. You could be a puncher for 20 years. You can't be a kicker for 20 years. <laughs> you, can't, you can't do that. That was these hips. No, you know, it's, it's an attribute-based yeah. game. Yeah. And, and, and the thing with the kicking is, you got to be flexible that day. Your hamstrings got to be loose. It's so much, it's a high-maintenance, Diva kind of yeah, you know yeah, style yeah, of fight, yeah, no disrespect. Definitely, and definitely. but I, but I came from that background. But I just think that being around the veterans and realizing that sometimes it's not about what you want to do, but what's appropriate. See, see, all of us are not going to get hit with ten axe kicks in a match, ten spinning back kicks unless you're a fool, uh, ten hook rounds. But any fighter can get hit with ten reverse punches. I don't care who you are. <laughs> any fighter that is a universal weapon against any fighter. So true, you true. master the high percentage and the low percentage. You use it, but it's not become. It doesn't become the majority of what you're doing. Me understanding that concept and buying into it, it, it gave me more years and. It just allows me. I, I feel like I can fight anybody, hit anybody with a reverse punch, which I have. I think you have. I think and, you have. Uh, yeah, so, you know. <laughs> and, and it's just the, the understanding of that, the distance, the, the fakes, how they all incorporate one another. Not knock on the kick or nothing, not saying not to kick. But I just think that you have to base your techniques on what's high percentage and what's not high percentage. You know, and, and, and again, being around those veterans right, and right. watching the APs and nasties, right. they all can kick a little, especially, especially Anthony Price. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You oh, started yeah. seeing them kind of that tight, deep, they good body, that angle. And, and, you minimize, you, you you subtract so you can get addition. And that's just kind of what I did. I don't think a lot of people know, I, I had talked about Mike Conbero, and you, you sort of judge a tree by the fruit it bears, and how Mike uh, did a lot of uh, training with Raymond in Raymond's early days. And Raymond, on the interview that we had on the Gilbert Pride interview section, talked about that. There's a young man that you've helped out tremendously that I've heard through the grave. I heard him talk about you myself, so I know uh, you've helped him out to take his game to the next level. One Ross Levine. What have you been doing with him? Because this dude is on fire. He's looking good. Um, 
Not a lot of people have your range. A lot of, not a lot of people have your speed. He doesn't have your physical attributes, but he does what he does. That you can tell there's a lot of tension and fluence mm -hmm. there. And the, and the kid's running through people. And he's one of the few American fighters, I'll be honest, that actually go out there and try to beat Raymond. There's not a lot of American fighters that try to beat Raymond. Props to Raymond. Uh, he's one of the few guys that actually goes at him. And I got my hat goes off to us. What have you done with him? Because I've seen his game elevate and change the last couple of years. He, he's one of the best fighters in North well, America by far right now. Well, only the hungry get fed. <laughs> and the only good feature Very according true. to your appetite. Very a lot true. of these fighters are on diets or they picky eaters. <laughs> Ross will come in there and do everything. Listen, you know, Ross will win a grand and I'll still chew him out. I'll be like, listen, you know that little funny kick right there? Right, I, I right, like right, that. Right. You need to stop doing this. And he'll say to me, well, I won by eight or I won by nine. He'll be like, yes, sir. Us, and, 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 and we train hard, and I lead by example. Lead, I lead. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm near with no, no, we, we heard about the tension. Example. We heard about the tension so, championship workouts. It's so, no joke. You know, and, and one thing I can say, he's very receptive. He's he's a, he's a great student. He knows how to learn. And the other thing is that I keep I'm honest with him. If he wins, he beat Raymond uh, in the U.S. Open. I took my hat off to him. I said, congratulations. I'm proud of you. Right. Do it again. We ain't celebrating that. Right. We ain't celebrating. Right. See, everybody else, we're not celebrating that. I'm tired, and that's what I told him. This, this is, this, you know, how many times you gonna beat Raymond on a Friday night team fight and you don't beat him on Saturday when the money count? True. That's True. What, this is what doing this on the highest level True. is doing. And, and, so, and like you said, these, a lot of these guys right now, What's they chumps. I'm, I'm just saying, I'm not coming out like I'm a gangster, but a lot of these guys really, really don't want to beat him. And I love RD, but I'm supposed to talk. Magic Johnson be telling his boys like that. True, you know, true. So I'm supposed to tell you like that. These, a lot of these guys don't want, but that, that ain't my problem. That's not my problem. We got a blueprint. We got things that we do in the school. It's, it's, it's a strategy. And I'm not done. I got a bunch of guys coming out that nobody, we don't even talk about right now. When, when they hit this, when they, they, hit come, the when they leave the underground, they go mainstream, they're going to know and, about And I'm sprinkling all of them New York guys that are serious, the guys that come down to Troy's, the Sam's. Yeah, you know, yeah. I got a bunch of footy dudes. It's just a movement right now. Guys and guys are just one to one, and we in there grinding, and we busting our butts, and we training, and we studying, and we're going to be smart about it. So, Ross is leading the way right now, but he, he I, got, I got some other guys that's, you know, coming up. Now, the only thing I've ever heard negative in the sport karate world about Johnny Tension is people will say that the, the greatest in the last 15, 18 years, Raymond Daniels, Jason Tankston, Trevor Nash, Johnny Tension, Brian Ruth, Damon Gilbert, others that, that have been battle tested and done it at least a decade, mm -hmm. where you at least minimum was to do it in your weight class, mm -hmm. and then you got some of them overalls mm -hmm. too. The only thing I've ever heard people say is when the Jasons, the Raymonds, the Brian Roofs, the Damons, when they're still hurt and they're still out here fighting 70, 60 percent, you won't see Jody for three, four years or two, three years. Do you still think that, hey, because when I did it, I was winning and I was banging with the dudes and winning. Or you say, OK, you know what, maybe you don't have to put me in that class because I didn't do it as many years consistently, what would be, because that's the only thing I ever heard people say is, well, you know, Jason, I've seen Jason fight with a cast on, Raymond fights with his eye patch, you know, I've seen all these, Damon and fought with a 10 screws in his neck, you know, that's, that's but, but Jody don't do that. Is, is, that's, that's, would you put Jody in that scene? You have to put me in that category. 